put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. The Bourne Ultimatum Movie Review Jason Bourne is starting to remember about the very first days of being Jason Bourne, and he's now determined to find out the truth. And that's pretty much everything I should reveal. This is not only the second sequel, it is also the closing chapter of the trilogy. This is where Jason Bourne's story ends, and the film really delivers on that. It might be the best of the three, and it certainly is better than Supremacy, and maybe about as good as Identity overall. As being the closing chapter to a trilogy, it of course has to provide closure and take us back to the beginning and, you know, tie in well, well with the first one, and it does all those, and quite well. This also gets sort of the unflinching action just slightly better than the second one. The second one is still really good in that aspect, but this entire movie is basically one long action scene, and in spite of that, Greengrass actually manages to give us just enough room to breathe. I mean, by the end of this movie, it's, it's an hour and 42 minutes long, and by the end of it, you're gonna need a breather, but you're not really overwhelmed. We're not talking Paul W. Sanderson levels. And it's not like, you know, this is one of those new action movies that really set the bar for future action movies. And the same could be said of movies like The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises, and both of those are genuinely draining where this movie isn't... Yeah, you know, it doesn't get to that level. Those movies are also quite a bit longer, but you get the idea. Now... It is sort of the less plot-heavy of the three, I suppose you could say. I think pretty much they had, they, they said all they wanted to with, you know, with, with supremacy. You know, the, the previous two movies had plenty of plot, but in this one there's not that much left to tell. So really we do just have Bourne's hunting for the answers. And of course, the CIA are trying to stop him because those answers are classified. And in, you know, with, with that, we have a few new characters. I believe it's David Strathairn who plays Noah Vosen, the deputy director of the CIA or something like that. He's, he's CIA and he's a big wig. And he's pretty determined to stop Bourne. And so, again, we have, you know, one on either side. We have Bourne, very determined to get something, and someone at the CIA, very determined to stop him. And so, we're, we're set for, yeah. The action continues to be these you know, chases some vehicular, some on foot. This actually, that's one of the things that makes the action in this so stand out. Not only is the sort of climactic action scene much more, much easier to follow than that of Supremacy. It's, it's severely badass. I, I, I like the one in Supremacy, and I can certainly see how it's, 
you know, good craftsmanship. It's it took a lot to to accom accomplish that. But this one, they they take it to the very limit of what you can believe could really happen. You know, it doesn't quite go into the level of violating the laws of physics. Excuse me, but it takes it to the very edge. You know, and there, there are some things that happen in the action scenes in this that you do not expect to happen. And that's really cool. So yes, the, the chases, you know, martial arts fights, and as per usual for this series, fights are not to show off, they are to finish your opponent. If a, if a fight goes on for for more than a few minutes, it's because the you know finishing moves are continually blocked and followed up by your opponent doing trying to do finishing moves on you. And then we have shootouts. Now, in spite of what I've just said about the climactic chase in this, there is still I think it's by this point only one, yeah, pretty much just one action scene in this. And in general, there's very little in this where Greengrass and his lighting guy are just refusing to cooperate with each other. Yeah, we have a couple of scenes where you can just barely tell what's going on because it's so sparsely lit. But yes, much less than in Supremacy and, I don't know, I'd say the action is still so fast that you can just barely follow it and at times you genuinely can't really quite follow it. I don't know, I found it, I find it less sort of... excessive. In this, I suppose is the right word. I, I find that in this, I don't find myself resigning and saying, okay, just wake me up when the action scene's over because I can't follow this. I, I don't know quite what it is. It, yeah. I don't know. I, the, the, maybe it's the filming and the editing that have gotten slightly better, or where, you know, maybe Greengrass is allowing us just a tiny little more of a an indication of what is actually going on. I, I, I can't quite put my finger on it, but it is better. It, I, I, this, I don't know if he got feedback or how exactly it worked, but he learned from the few mistakes that he made on Supremacy. And in that vein as well, this one does less stuff that the first one did than Supremacy. A few things that Supremacy does that are kind of very much like things that happened in the first, and that's obviously not that interesting. In this one, we have some, some different things and some nice surprises. And I also say this one has just a hint more humor than Supremacy does. Now, Joan Allen returns as the ass-kicking female, I don't know if she's also deputy or I don't know how the power the ladder works there, but anyway, she's also big in the CIA. And we have a, I'm not sure how much else I should talk about the, as far as the characters and acting goes, but the acting is all great. Again, we feel like you know, the, the people that we see in the movie that are supposed to be working for the CIA, you believe that they're working for the CIA. You know, they, they all come off as extremely professional. And Matt Damon, again, plays the role to perfection, really. He's just, he's got the determination. He makes you believe that he could figure out all these various things that Bourne figures out. I'd also say this one does at least slightly better than Supremacy on bringing it back to Bourne just being really, I don't know, what 
was for uh, observing. He's it's observational skills of observation and the sort of quick thinking and you know very quickly figuring out how to make something work than him having psychic powers where Supremacy had several scenes where it feels like ah, he couldn't possibly have known that was going to work. In this it feels more like it's something that, you know, when you see him do it, you're like, oh, right, because instead of, how did he know that was going to work? The, the pace is fantastic. I, I don't know if I made that clear. The movie does actually slow down at points and have us really, you know, getting into a scene that isn't a chase, and it just, it's, it's never boring. There is not a boring second to be found in this entire movie. It's really quite astonishing. It's, it's fantastic craftsmanship. Now. That might actually more or less cover it. Yes. I've reviewed other parts of this series. The links are in the description box. Please rate and comment. And hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.